Hey yo everyone, it's me Rachu back at you with another train wreck of an episode because we are going through my old middle school story, uh, knockoff warrior cats story again. If you haven't already watched the first episode of this little mini series that I'm doing, I would highly suggest you do that so you'd understand where this is coming from. But to sum it all up, basically in 2015 I started this, uh, warrior foxes series i guess you could say um i got like 60 pages in and just sort of stopped but i felt like sharing it with the world so that's what this series is all about and without further ado i think now is a good time to stop this intro and start with the story shall we chapter two huh what the young apprentice opened his eyes and spoke groggily oh good Sparktail gasped. I thought you were going to sleep till the end of Sunpack. Sunpack? The end? The for <laughs> The foreign dog was instantly alert, shaking off the scraps of spiderweb encrusted with dry blood. Did you send any? How bad is it? Sparktail was losing interest rapidly, so she blurted out, Do you have a name? <laughs> oh geez, okay. Of course I do, he said, groaning. It's Moundtail. Now where's your burrower? Our burrower? For what? Roottail looked up inquiringly from organizing balls of moss. Moundtail groaned again. The battle! The raid on Ground Pack! Ground Pack? Deerbrand's head apparently overheard the conversation and became intently interested at the word raid. They're going to kill Sharpheart, he said, his rage changing into horror. Who is they? Ivy Leaf demanded, forcing her own path into the conversation. The bears! Send help! All will be lost otherwise. Mountel dashed out of the medicine fox barrow and out of the clearing headed towards home. Deer Prance was the only one to remain calm. Sparktail, fetch. <laughs> fetch. Oh my gosh. Um, she turned out of the burrow in search of moss fur. Sparktail stood frozen, not knowing the territory, terrain, or, well, anything out of the camp. Go run, Roottail encouraged. Bro, why are they sending this, like, tiny apprentice to do their dirty work? Anyway, Sparktail obeyed. She ran blindly into the forest, following the scent of Moundtail. She halted. The strong scent of ground pack had vanished down into a hole in the ground. Well, I suppose he went down here, she guessed. She cautiously slipped her head into the hole, only to get it stuck. She kicked and flailed her tail end. She then slipped down the tunnel freely as the tunnel widened. Arg, help! Sparktail whined. She heard bellowing roars and yelps of pain and torture further down the tunnel. Wow, I was an edgy kid. Her eyes widened. What did she get herself into? She fell onto a leaf pile at the end of the tunnel and scanned the area. Three bear cubs were causing destruction and re wreaking havoc. Sparktail wanted to help, but the mission was clear. Besides, she didn't have any training yet. What could she do? Yeah, good point. Why did you go in the f What is your mission? Your mission isn't clear. I- I'm so confused. Anyway. Hey, you! A familiar voice barked from the other side of the underground cave. Mountail raced towards Spark- Someone has their alarm. Their car alarm going off across the street. Well, this is not a dandy time for that. Okay, there we go. Anyway, a familiar- a uh, familiar voice barked from the other side of the underground cave. Mountail raced towards Sparktail at breakbone speed. Can you help? We'll fight, at least? Their eyes met. One pair full of hopelessness, the other of pity. I... I can't. Sparktail looked at the ground. There was something about his eyes, so close as Sparktail would, would describe it. I don't know how. Ah! Oh, that was a terrible scream. An ear-splitting choke brought her to the awakening life. What is that sentence? Mountail had been lifted into the air, body held tightly between the paws of an angry mama bear standing on its hind legs. She roared and growled. Sparktail looked up in complete and utter shock. She felt something squeeze her tail and fling her across the den. Panic surged through her body as she found she couldn't breathe and saw a hot, sticky, bright red blood crawling down the rock as she had landed on. Sparktail felt dazed. Her eyelids were made of stone. They dropped, dropped, slipped. Chapter 3 Sparktail opened her eyes groggily. She saw a flash of brownish tan. Echoed voices pounded in her ears. 
root tail, let ye me some squirrel, the first voice said, obviously being Ivy Leaf, I think. Her hearing became understandable now. Spur, spark tail, mount tail whined in the nest next to her. Thanks for being there. It, it was good for you to follow me. He finished, choosing his words carefully. Yeah. Sparktail spoke so softly that Mountail had no idea she spoke. Suddenly she remembered. Training! She gasped as she attempted to run to Deer Prince and inquire when to start training. Hold still and stay here. Training can wait for a couple days, Rootail barked authoritatively. Just then, Skytail came into the burrow with Dawntail and Tigertail behind him. I heard what happened. Are you okay? As he looked up, he stared at Mountail, standing over his nest. Who is this? Oh, this is the guy who was sent for help. You know, the ground pack raid? Yes, yes, Sparktail, I know, but Sparktail? Mountail pricked his ears. That's very similar to my, one of my littermates' names. I mean, it was just Spark, and she was... He looked at the floor in dismay and paused. Was killed by a no-tail. He sighed. I never really met her, you see. Well, because I'm older than her, and I've only heard stories, but... A silence passed over the burrow. Everyone was deep in thought. Well, Rootail drew in a long breath. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Well, bye, Skytail, I gotta go. Yeah, bye. Skytail, Dawntail, and Tigertail awkwardly backed out of the burrow. Rootail gazed after them. She continued her scolding without taking her eyes off the entrance to the burrow. Can't live the life you want. Not here. Rootail said it so gently and softly that Sparktail and Moundtail could barely make out her whispers. Okay, for some context of this scene thingy, uh, Rootail didn't want to be a medicine fox. He, she wanted to be a warrior thingy, a long tail or whatever I call them. I don't even know, man. Uh, but then she got stuck in this job of being the medicine fox's apprentice. And then she's like, you can't, I can't, I don't want to, I don't like this life. I can't live the life I want. Not here. I'm so edgy. So that's what's going on here. I did a horrible job explaining it, but there you go. Well, okay then, Moundtail sighed drastically and curled up into a ball. Sparktail couldn't sleep. She was hungry. She could do with a plump squirrel. Roottail, she barked. Could you get me a squirrel? I could use one. Sure, Roottail turned out of the burrow and went to the prey pile. She turned back without anything. Sorry, no squirrel. Sparktail slumped in thought. Can't Dawntail catch one? Wait a moment. Moundtail held a paw up and walked up separating the two sisters. What's wrong with a goldfinch? I mean, really? Rootail scoffed. Everyone knows that Sparktail won't eat anything but squirrel. She lives on it. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is the driest dialogue. What the heck? Moundtail padded back to his nest, visually unoffended by Rootail's scoffs. Carry on. It's just getting good. What? 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 Okay. Okay. He paused. Hey, Sparktail. I know it's none of my business, but what is wrong with a goldfinch? What do you have with goldfinches, young man? Sorry, sorry, I'm back. Since your heart seems set on a goldfinch, I'll get you one. Rootail barked as she turned to start a second trip to the prey pile. She secretly wanted to leave the two apprentices alone because it seemed they wanted to talk in private. Wow, great storytelling past Rachel. You really did great. <laughs> A crisp breeze tripped the medicine fox's burrow. What in the sweet baloney does that mean? Breezes don't trip in burrows. I am so confused. Mm, this is getting interesting. Sparktail deliberately avoided Moundtail's big eyes as they pranced around the room. Why are they prancing? Hardened with curiosity. Oh, oh, Moundtail's eyes are prancing, not Moundtail himself. Okay. So, Sparktail jumped as the empty, hollow voice broke into the sleepy air. Um, how's your life? <laughs> how's your life? She yeah. really just went, how's your life? <laughs> Ladies and gents, there are tears in my eyes. That is classic middle school me, and I hate it so much. <clears throat> anyway, Moundtail attempted a failed smile. Okay, Sparktail spoke softly. All she wanted was food. Talk seemed to twist her stomach into uncomfortable shapes. Where's a squirrel when you need one? 
I bet you're wondering why I despise Squirrel, Moundtail grunted. No one was wondering that, sir. Like, no one was one. That was my mother's favorite food. Before she was killed. His voice cracked like lightning. What happened? Was it the same as Spark? No tail. Yeah. Moundtail finished memor memorably? How does... Mm, okay. I was passed on to Sharpheart. She's nice. He chuckled a little. I mean, I never met my real mother, only heard rumors. He sighed. Sparktail nodded solemnly. Faint yipping... Oh, jeez. Faint yipping of peace came closer. Closer. Sparktail got up to see what was going on. As she slipped into the burrow and came out the other end, strange foxes whined with surrender, smelling vaguely of mountain tail. All the other... All the older foxes looked to the ground, tails tucked and ears folded in shame. Moundtail came up hopefully. When he saw the strangers, he barked like a pup despite his back. Sharp heart! Moundtail. A striped dog with shamed green eyes stepped to, un to one side. Other bushy tails and apprentices did the same, creating an aisle. At the end, a half-alive multicolored vixen with raging orange eyes laid there. Fury burning in her tail. Ew, 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 ew. I don't like that image. Mm, no. I don't need help, she choked. Her eyes laid on the shocked apprentice, staring at her fur. It was dusty, the dust glued with sickness and injury. Her eyes and spirit seemed to be the only living things about her. Even they fell in strength as she saw the untested young dog utterly speechless. Moundtail. Alright, and that was chapters two and three in my Warrior Foxes knockoff story. And boy, did that seem a lot more cringy to you than like the last episode? Because my goodness, um, that was worse. I can assure you that was so much worse than the other one. Anyway, um, without further ado, I'm going to say goodbye to you guys now. I love y'all. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you have not to keep up with this series. Um, and yeah, have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye guys.